This video is a cadaveric dissection demonstrating the SOMSAC transfer, which is a transfer of a motor branch from triceps into the axillary nerve. The cadaver is positioned in the prone position with the elbow hanging over the edge of the dissection table. Palpate the soft spot on the posterior aspect of the joint where the quadrilateral space lies. Mark the spine of the scapula and mark the acromion as the lateral border of the acromion is used as one of our anatomical landmarks. The deltoid muscle arises from the spine of the scapula, the acromion and the lateral one third of the clavicle and inserts in the midpoint of the humerus. This line demonstrates the lateral border of the scapula in this position. The incision follows the posterior border of deltoid and extends into the upper third of the arm in the interval between the heads of triceps. The skin is opened and the dissection completed down to the deep fascia. There are a number of ways of trying to identify the axillary nerve using this approach. The first technique is to try and identify the upper lateral cutaneous nerve of the arm, which arises from the posterior division of the axillary nerve and enters the skin, usually in the anterior incision. Careful dissection mobilizes the posterior border of deltoid. Here we can see the cutaneous branch, which is arising from the quadrilateral space and traveling up into the skin anteriorly. This should be mobilized. The tug test confirms the puckering of the skin on the upper lateral arm, but this is a sensory branch and the branch can then be tagged. Once tagged, this nerve can be followed back into the quadrilateral space to identify the posterior division of the axillary nerve, which in turn can be used to identify the anterior division of the axillary nerve. An alternative strategy is to mark the lateral border of the acromion and five centimeters distal to this, the axillary nerve anterior division courses around the humerus on the undersurface of the deltoid muscle, piercing it and supplying it from beneath. Care should be taken when positioning retractors for this dissection so that the nerve is not compromised. The posterior border of delta is deltoid is elevated. Here we're demonstrating the tug test and the tug sign on the posterior division branch to the skin. And here we're demonstrating that the axillary nerve anterior division is coursing approximately five centimeters distal to the lateral border of the acromion. So lifting up the muscle, here is the pedicle with the nerve and the vessel just lying above it. The vessel is mobilized and with careful dissection to avoid damage to the veins accompanying the anterior division of the posterior circumflex humeral artery. A surgical sloop is placed around the anterior division of the axillary nerve. It's important to note there may be one or two branches of the nerve at this point and here you can see them coming together to form one main nerve trunk. This nerve trunk can be followed posteriorly now into the quadrilateral space to identify the rest of the axillary nerve and then in turn the posterior division. So the quadrilateral space is bounded superiorly by the capsule of the shoulder joint, laterally by the surgical neck of the humerus, medially the long head of triceps, and inferiorly the upper border of teres major. Here the posterior division of the axillary nerve is identified and again is tagged with a surgical sloop. Coming through the quadrilateral space is the axillary nerve which branches into its posterior division supplying posterior deltoid and teres minor and the upper lateral cutaneous nerve of the arm and the anterior division which supplies the anterior two-thirds of the deltoid muscle. With gentle traction on these branches and mobilization, it's possible to lift the whole axillary nerve up through the quadrilateral space. And here we can see in the depth of the wound, the nerve coming from the anterior part of the shoulder into the posterior 
part of the shoulder and that's the main axillary nerve trunk. For the purposes of this dissection we've just cut some of the vessels and veins but in practice it's careful hemostasis is required because any bleeding in this point uh, at this point of the operation can distort the anatomy. Once we're happy with this dissection, anterior division, posterior division and upper lateral cutaneous nerve, further posterior division to teres minor and the auxiliary nerve trunk, we complete the limited neurolysis, mobilise the branches sufficiently and then we can harvest the donor nerve. This is the depths of the wound showing the quadrilateral space again and on the left hand side of the screen is the long head of triceps. Somsak Lee Chevenvong described the nerve branch of the long head of triceps transfer to the anterior division of the auxiliary nerve for restoration of deltoid function following C5 avulsion injuries in the brachial plexus and will be undertaking this traditional technique although further modifications um, have been undertaken and at the end of the video we'll demonstrate using a medial triceps branch. Posterior division of deltoid supplied and the posterior division of the auxiliary nerve. This red sloop is around the anterior division and the blue sloop is around the upper lateral cutaneous nerve. Here we can demonstrate the anterior division coursing under the deltoid and the bulk of deltoid will be supplied from beneath. And it's five centimeters distal to the lateral border of the acromion. So if during the initial dissection you do not identify the cutaneous nerve of the arm, the reliable five centimeter marking is a good way of finding the axillary nerve, rolling it against the humerus and identifying the anterior division which can be mobilized. Next we proceeded distal in the arm and we're developing the interval between the long head of triceps under my finger, looking for the lower border of latissimus dorsi coming under teres major and here is the radial nerve entering the triangular space. The triangular space is bounded by the long head of triceps, the, the inferior border of lat dorsi and then laterally the shaft of the humerus. And this is the radial nerve. The radial nerve is mobilized gently and lifted into the wound. It does travel from anterior to posterior in a spiraling direction around the humerus accompanied by the profunda brachii artery in its veins, so care must be taken to avoid damage to the veins. A blue sloop is placed around, around the whole of the radial nerve and we can see here that the branches to the posterior cutaneous nerve of the arm and the medial head of triceps can be readily separated from the main radial nerve. They're definitely separate fascicle groups as their branching pattern has started to form in the anterior compartment of the arm. The medial triceps branch is identified and tagged here with a red rubber sloop and this is the long head branch which is separate and superiorly and medially placed which is coming into the long head and is tagged. So the blue sloop is around the radial nerve, the lateral branch is now being mobilized. This is too short for transfer. This is the cutaneous nerve, the back of the arm. This is the lateral head branch. Next, some background material is placed over the teres major. We're going to do a transfer onto the anterior division of the axillary nerve. So this is sectioned deep in the quadrilateral space after internal neurolysis, and it's reflected inferiorly to sit over teres. The reason we take the anterior division is no axons will be lost to the skin as the upper lateral cutaneous nerve arises from the posterior division. The first part of this transfer is going to be used using the long head branch seen entering the muscle here. In order to get as much length as possible, we obey the donor distal mantra and reflect the long head branch superiorly so it sits comfortably, gently approximated against the anterior division with a good size match and a microscopic coaptation can be performed. An alternative strategy is to take the medial triceps branch. Now the medial triceps branch contains more axons and may branch into two sub-branches, one supplying medial head of triceps and anconius and one supplying medial triceps. 
My preferred technique is to take both of these branches together, which has a larger volume of axons, and then this can be co-opted to the whole auxiliary nerve if needed. In this case, we're doing a transfer onto the anterior division of the auxiliary nerve in a technique Susan McKinnon has described. Microscopic coaptation can be performed using interrupted sutures and supported with a fibrin glue or a connector wrap. So this video demonstrates the use of a radial nerve branch to triceps either the long or the medial head to re the anterior part of deltoid with a distally reflected anterior division of the auxiliary nerve and the coaptation performed on the teres major muscle.